And just seconds before the clock strikes midnight, we welcome you to Inside the NBA. I was wrong about that one. Presented by Kia. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Ooh-wee. Ernie Johnson, oh, Shaq, Shredamus is Penny, off on that and one. Charles. Uh, Chuck celebrating <laughs> winning the bet. <laughs> That's yeah, normal, isn't it? Many more donuts. Hey, there you go, there you go. Look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, guys, thanks for the tweets. Even though I don't do social media, but we appreciate the tweets. Yes, we do. Appreciate you hanging out and watching us here on Inside. Oklahoma City, the focal point on Thursday night, the place where Russell Westbrook spent 11 seasons, played more than 800 games in the Thunder uniform, made eight all-star teams, won an MVP, and averaged a triple-double in each of his last three seasons, all the while running with a motor that only knew one breakneck gear. On July 16th, he was traded to Houston for Chris Paul and nearly six months later returned to OKC for the first time. A lot of love in that building for Russell Westbrook. And one of the best fan bases in the NBA. We used to have fun when we were down. Yeah, saying we're never going to see it again. Chris Paul had himself a night on the OKC side. I'm glad they're doing well, but those fans deserve to have a good competitive team. Yeah, Shea Gilgis Alexander has a good guy to learn from in Chris Paul oh. on that team. Okay, I'll see you. They just loading up. 48-34 at this point. James Harden had had a very slow first half. I don't know if Houston retired from the game last night, but OKC just had more energy from the start. Oh, they played the Hawks last night. Yeah. Yeah, still had almost blew a 20-something point lead. Yeah. Yeah, it's still a game, Chuck. Stop it, Shaq. Westbrook. <laughs> oh, they played the Hawks. Westbrook was the only rocket enjoying a good night. That's the like at the half. It was six day. That's the that's the scrimmage. The CP3 pulling uh, up and knocking down. You know Chris was going probably. Chris was ready for this game tonight. Danilo Gallinari, a 29 to 19 third quarter. As they put this thing out of reach. Mm. Oh, yes, it was that kind that of a type of night. I know it does go on. Sacked him. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Come on, finish that. Got to finish that. Come on. Oh, I'd season more well, points well, for well. Houston, 92. Mm -hmm. They were tired from last night, Doug. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. Set. Look at Chris Paul. Man, oh, like man. the good old days. What's that called, a nutmeg? Uh, uh, that, that's in soccer. Go between his legs. Yes. Yeah. You just go between the two guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If it went between the legs, it's a nutmeg. OK. Yeah. Nutmeg. Yeah. You act like it's the good old days. And it was a ballsy like player, man, right, Kenny? I'll tell you. Check. You act like they went to the gold club or something last night. 113 to 92. Yeah, and it was a nice way to finish, too, with uh, Russell Westbrook saluting the crowd. Well, he did, well, listen, they gave him a lot of love. Uh, they, they are great fans in Oklahoma City. Uh, Russ, they had a tough game, but I, I was just glad they showed Russ love because he deserved that. I, I admire that man for giving maximum effort every night. He don't load management. Nothing but love and respect. And, on a, and then Chris Paul, I told you, he, to me, he's the best leader in the NBA. They got a bunch of young pieces to go with Steven Adams and Chris. They're going to be competitive. But in yeah. games like that, Ernie, you can never do it by yourself. Your teammates got to, like, they got to step up. And, you know, Houston really didn't have a lot of energy tonight. Didn't shoot the three ball well at all. Lacks of days going defense. But in games like that, you're going to be emotional. Your team has to be, you know. Yeah, right but C-Shack, that's one of the reasons you guys are higher on the Rockets than I am. Like, if you look at, the Rockets, James and Russ have to play well for them to win. Like, they have to play well. Uh, I don't think there's any other player uh, in the NBA, uh, a team where you can say, well, this guy has to play well. Like, James and Russ have so much responsibility for that Rockets team. If they don't play crazy every night they're not going to win Harden 17 points on 5 of 17 shooting that is a season low for him but Oklahoma City gets 20 from Shea Gilgis Alexander 18 from Paul 16 from Schroeder 23 from Gallinari Adams goes for 15 and 8 
This is Stephen Adams' seventh year. First time he's averaged a double-double, uh, 12 and 10 going into this game. So, yeah, I think as you put it earlier, nice pieces on this team. Yeah. Well, but see, and, what's going to be interesting, uh, number one, I think uh, Rudy Gobert and Stephen Adams are probably the two most underrated players in the NBA. What's going to be very interesting for Oklahoma City is the trading deadline that's coming up in the next month. Because you got two guys who I think could take you from being here to be a champion. That's Chris Paul and Steven Adams. And you have to, uh, Oklahoma City, they got a bunch if of. If you're another team. If you're another team. Okay. Because Chris, if you, uh, like I said, I don't even know what team I have in mind, but if he went to certain teams with his leadership, and Steven Adams, I think I said he's unbelievable. But they, I, I, to me, they, I personally believe they got to be sellers. Because even as great as they're playing, they're the number seven seed. And there's no number seven seed going to go deep in the playoffs in the Western Conference. Well, we thought, you know, at the beginning of the season, we said this, this team could be six, seven, eight, you know, as constructed. But the key is commitment. Is there going to be a commitment to say these are the guys? And so far, they've all bought into we're here and we're going to maximize our effort and we're going to, and we're going to play together and we're going to play the right way. And... You know, the, those three guards, you know, with, with, uh, with, with CP3 and, 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 and Alexander uh, and, and Gilchrist and, and Schroeder, they all do, they all are effective in different areas of the floor, which is kind of weird. Like, usually you have three guards, like, like one or two of them do the same thing. They all do different things and difficult to guard, but are they committed to this group and just building in with more draft picks? Or they're saying, nope. We don't mind. We don't even care if we don't make the playoffs, and we're gonna go, we're gonna be we're gonna be sellers, and we're gonna get rid of Chris Paul. We're gonna trade Adams, and we're gonna really go young, or not? Because Chuck, they could, you know, be seven seed this year, bring in a draft pick, make one more slight move, and then all of a sudden you're four. So no, because, okay. because you have yeah, to factor stop it, Kenny. You have to, yeah, you, Kenny. Because first you of all, you, it, you have to factor in uh, Chris's age, mm -hmm. thirty-six. He's thirty-six. Mm -hmm. And old people don't get old. They don't get better. They get older. And listen, they're not, listen, the Lakers and the Clippers are the two best teams in the West. True. Then you got Utah. And, and this is where I'm saying between Utah, Denver. They're not Dallas. better than Utah and Denver. I'm saying that about they Dallas? could construct the team uh, I, I very think, similar to I, what I, they I have. think that's, that's a great question, Shaq. I, I don't know if they're better than Dallas. That'll be a great series. But the top four teams are set. Lakers, Clippers, Denver, Utah. Uh, U and Utah's playing great right now. Uh, but those four teams are the best in the West by far, and I think the Clippers and the Lakers have separated themselves, Westbrook, in my opinion. Westbrook, 34, leads everybody on the night, but the Rockets lose by 21 at OKC. Boston and Philadelphia. And Joel Embiid not playing in this one against Kemba Walker and the Celtics because he's got ligament damage in that dislocated ring finger on his left hand, and so he's uh, going to have surgery on Friday. Uh, Step you See, back. Yeah, Kemba doing what Kemba does. Yeah, he came off firing after that ejection. 13 points in the first quarter. Boston was up nine. Oh, who we play for? Yeah, like Norvell Pell, huh? Okay, right. Cantor with the finish underneath. It was a 12-point game, and then a 12-0 run by Philadelphia got him back in this thing. That's Josh Richardson. Ernie, you know, who some, had 29. See, this I, t I told you tonight, this is the beginning of the Sixers season right now. It's time for Ben to be a leader, be great. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah. But, but also, uh, Josh and Tobias, those guys go out to step up. So this is the time when your team's going to grow. Philly hit them 19-4 to four right, right. early in the third quarter. Kemba for three there, and then Ben Simmons. I think they will step up, Chuck, because even though Ben's doing his post move, he don't like to shoot. All you got to do is run to get to your spot. You right, see, you know, you got. I, I, I would love to play with a guy like Ben who didn't want to yeah. shoot the ball, and all you got to do is run the four and Stand out there and shoot three oh, like the guys do today. That's Norvell Pell again with the block Norvell. on Cantor and the little finger wave. I'm not aware of the name they kid Norvell. Urkan Korkmask connected there and then. Sound like an ice cream, don't you? Yeah, oh, come on. <laughs> sure hey, can you have me some of that Norvell Pell? <laughs> <laughs> Norvell Pell. Hey, honey, can you give me some Norvell ice cream? <laughs> what kind do you want? The Norvell, the best ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you 
people are always selling, <laughs> big fella. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out to my guy Elton Brand uh, go, for going out getting Al Horford, yeah. who's gonna be really huge. You just right. shouting him out. He's been there all year. Well, I know, but I'm saying, well, they have played well. If we talk about this, Kenny, yeah, what's wrong with this jump hook? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little further back. <laughs> it's, it's behind his head instead of on yep. the side of his head. It works. Yeah, yeah it does work. Uh, ben Work Simmons on the night, 19 points on 9 of 15 shooting. Horford had 17, 8, and 6. First time he said better than 15 points in a month. Shout that, out to the Lakers that. for getting Anthony Davis since you shouting out people doing stuff eight months later. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. Shout out to LeBron James for getting Anthony Davis. Hey, how's that? Uh, eight months later. <laughs> like, he's like, shout out to Elton Bragg. He like, no, but I'm saying, though. Like, oh, yeah. No, no, but that, it, this is why he's here, though. No, no, but I'm case, saying, though, this guy, got it's, hurt. It's, it's, the, it's the first time he's had over 15, which he should have more than 15 points. He should be averaging that. But now, when Joel Embiid gets hurt, he's going to be out a while. You plug in a guy who's been yeah. an all-star, so that's a. I did say he has to play like the Boston Horford, Horford now, and not this yes, Philadelphia version who has not been exactly scoring. what you said. And saying. tonight he gets 15 points. This is exactly what I said. And I just <sighs> yeah, you repeat it like you always do. Reiterated, fool. How many times? How many no, times have I heard Chris Gee, Paul is the best leader? Fool, that's what that one. And I heard that 900 times. I don't want to hear it no more. Time I'm gonna stab you next time you say Chris Paul <laughs> is the best like leader in the NBA. Don't Come say on, it. Man, quit acting like a thug on here. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> I took Philadelphia. No, he said Sloan. He didn't say <laughs> think, has, has beaten the Celtics now. Chris Paul is the best leader. Chris Paul, all, we know. All Damn. three times this year, Damn. and they are 11 and one when they hold teams under 100. They hold Boston to 98 tonight and win it 109 to 98. The uh, Houston Rockets and Oklahoma City Thunder, as we just showed you the highlights, 113 to 92, and Russell Westbrook's return. Mm to Oklahoma City. We understand that Russell is in the process of making his way oh, great. to the uh, podium. Yes. And uh, we'll hear his post-game thoughts on... Uh, you know what? That, that what? Last year in, in Boston, you <laughs> played like a slug. <laughs> you were barely making it up and down the court. Yeah, but when I got home, I looked at my cap and I saw four things that you will never see. What's that? R-I-N-G-S. Yes. yes. R-I-N-G-S. Yeah. He said, all right. Hey, yeah. hey, listen, Ed McMahon, why you got to, every time Johnny says a joke, you got to jump. No, because I looked at, no, <laughs> no, because I looked at my cabinet and saw something you ain't see either. Exactly. <laughs> Two R-I-G-S. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, so, I'm like, you, that's it. Six rings. That's the name of our podcast. That's the name of our Six new podcast. Rings. I still, Dom and Dom yeah, sounds better rings. than me. So, uh, it's better than Steam Room. Yeah. No, Steam Room is awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're just a hater, brother. No, Steam Room. Six rings. I like that. You like that? Six rings? Hey, yeah. Uh, uh, what are you guys talking about here? What you see on Chuck's hands? Yeah, yeah, Cheeto finger. <laughs> fat boy, look at you. You have Cheeto finger, <laughs> you know fat that boy. Is, that is. That's your, um... Manny Petty. No. No, it's Cheeto. Is the, uh, what's the stuff you put in? Or was it, was it the, yeah, uh... Cheeto fingers. Was it, was it the it? strawberry, uh... No, he was here. No, don't, Ernie, don't pretend. He was back there eating Cheetos. I saw him eating Cheetos. <laughs> Stop no, it. It's like one calorie. No, Kenny, he was eating Cheetos. The, the, the meal drink. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it wasn't. He, he was eating baked Cheetos, America. Yeah. I, I saw you. I promise you'll hear from <laughs> Russell Westbrook on his return yeah. to OKC. Yeah, I was it's eating Cheetos. Yet. I was yeah. eating Take a break. Come hey, Alex. Cheetos. You're such a... Uh, and, uh, so many great memories, great people. Obviously, the best fans <clears throat> in the world because they they come with it, and tonight they they, they came with it. And the <clears throat> excuse me, the organization, Sam, Mr. Bennett, you know they do an amazing job of just making you feel home, and I feel like I was home. Yeah, of course, man. I never been in there, <laughs> uh, so I mean, definitely. The whole thing is a little weird coming into the building, going there, and even going through that tunnel. Um, but once I got back on the court, I felt like I was back, you know, doing the same thing I always been doing the last 11 years. You showed, you, you obviously, <clears throat> homage. You had the Jordans on tonight. Why not? You know, just talk about why you want to do that for the city and just um, show your gratitude. Said again. You know, why not do zero point threes? Yeah. Um, it started with my, my clothing line. Honestly, that, that was uh, uh, my clothing line and a gift. I wanted to do something uh, for the the city, for the people. Um, and 
me and my team, um, we came up with uh, zero regrets and something that I um, creatively try to figure out what I can do for the city. And um, I don't regret one thing being here in Oklahoma City. I don't regret um, signing back. I don't regret staying here. I don't regret anything that I did here. I feel like I left everything out on the floor every single night um, and did what I could for the city. Russell, a lot of great players have come here and moved on. They haven't done that kind of video tribute for anybody. What did it mean to you to, to be the first one? I mean, it's special. You know, it's a um, very, very special thing that meant a lot to me, honestly. Um, and coming back here just making me feel um, like I was very, very appreciated. appreciated and um, I, I appreciate it a lot. Russ, after the game, you went over and gave uh, Clay Bennett a hug. I, know, I think Aubrey's widow as well. What, what made you decide that's something you wanted to do? Um, Mr. Ben has done a lot for me and my family. He has um, done things that um, go unnoticed. He's always <clears throat> very, very supportive of anything I've ever done for the city. Um, while I was here in Oklahoma, um, the fans here, the people, um, they never did me no wrong. I have nothing, um, no bad blood and nothing here in the city from no fans, no nobody in the organization, uh, because they gave me all they have and I gave them all I had. The uh, yes. fans in Oklahoma City showing a lot of uh, respect, uh, wearing these uniforms several times this season as a way of remembering that horrible day in Oklahoma City. Yeah, great, great remembrance of them. Shout out to Ashley, who works there with, uh, at the office who uh, sent up the uniforms, but because those are uh, very memorable. The 95 that they sent us, very memorable. And I'll say something. Uh, we went to that memorial. Yeah. Yeah. And it is one of the most chilling things. Agreed. That I've ever experienced. It was kind of like we went to the Dr. King Center here in Atlanta, yeah. the mm -hmm. Civil Rights Museum. Yeah. But just uh, seeing all the mug shots at Dr. King's thing, but listening to like uh, the tapes and things in Oklahoma City, it was, if you get a chance, I know it's sad and surreal, but if you get a chance to go to that uh, memorial, please go. Anybody who lives anywhere around the world, number one, but especially in Oklahoma City. This was a night that was well done on several fronts by a first class organization in Oklahoma yeah. City. Uh, the highlights continue with the Portland Trail Blazers. Are you serious? Minnesota Timberwolves. Are we really going to show this game? Melo coming off a game winner over the Raptors the other night, but he this only went three good. for ten tonight. Man, Eight points. let me tell you something. If you went to see this game, you just got you. You, you just can't wait till the Vikings play Sunday. Uh, this is maybe a basketball fan. Come on, dude. Damon Lillard. This you want to see Damon Lillard? This is not a good basketball game. This is two teams that stink. The 34-28 <laughs> was the Portland lead. What do they do, Chuck? <laughs> and then, oh, Portland gets outscored 31 to 13 in the second quarter. Uh, you, you know, I, I'm so, I, I got. You know how I, I, I can't oh. believe how bad both of these teams are. I really can't. Was Cat a Cat play? Cat's been out for 12 games now with a knee. Wait, they lost by this minute without Cat? Come on, Portland. This guy right here, pull up. Got him. Bah! Andrew Wiggins, 69-51. Come on, man. You're oh. down 20 without Big Cat. Oh, Gordy Good. Dang What's that? action for Gordy you. Dang. I ain't like shoot like that. Yeah. Dang, man. Well, and then, uh, we'll well, when I'm watching this gang, I ain't saying dang. I'm saying damn. <laughs> Noah Vonley. Noah Vonley. I was wrong about Noah Vonley. It's not like an Italian dish, no, no. no. Come on, Portland yeah. Trail Blazers. Uh, everything sounds like something to you tonight. Uh, 116 to 102, Minnesota wins that. They've won four out of their last six, three in a row at home. Portland has lost seven of its last nine, and they are, you know, they're the their last in assists in the NBA. The Blazers only had oh, 14 close. assists tonight. Well, you have to pass the ball to lost get the 116 to 102. That's ridiculous, Portland. They're five and seven now without Cat, Minnesota. Here's John Beeline. You may have heard of him. Yeah, first of all, I, I think people need to get off John Beeline's back, to be honest with you. They had lost five in a row coming in. They're in Holy Detroit. Ball. Andre Drummond. This is another game we need to wait oh, to come out God. on DVD. Holy ball, I like Holy that. Ball. 
Andre Drummond, 28 points and 23 rebounds. Okay, Andre. I tell you what, man. Uh, I, I love Drummond. Y'all know that. But, man, this Detroit team, I picked them to be good, and I was 100% wrong. 200. His 10th 20 <laughs> rebound game of the year. Is that Delo Dova? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, he's still playing. I didn't know he's still playing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that aside. Oh. Yeah, Cavs had a Tristan 12 Thompson two. rolling, didn't he? Hey, Tristan Thompson had 35, a career high. Oh, he never had a 30-point game. Oh, uh, slipped out his hand, D. Rose, on that one. Ball slipped. That was not yeah. a uh, so you know what we get? Oh, overtime! Oh, you get more. You get more. Just when you think things can get worse, they go to overtime. Oh, oh go D Rose. Rose had 27 on the night. Oh. And here comes Darius Garland. Oh. And here comes Kevin Love connecting out of the corner. Oh, that's a good play. No one was. Uh, good bad defense, yeah. <laughs> All right, Cavs up three. Uh oh. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Give it up. Hey, how about double overtime? No way. That's cash it. No. Oh. Now the Cavs win at 115 to 112 in OT. They've won both of their overtime games this year. Well, oh. that, the Cavs Cavaliers. Maybe they should try to get the overtime. <laughs> they should, that, see, they're play, their games are too short, man. <laughs> Play five extra minutes. Oh, oh man. So they, they start a six game trip with a 115 112 win, and uh, everybody was excited about that one. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, it's that's his career high. Yeah, do you hear the music in the back? Come on, man. It's the sluggish, rugged bone. Come on, man. Come on, man. Are you great? Are y'all really throwing water on this dude? Hey, no. 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 Hey, it's been back? a rough 24 hours, and so here's, jo here's John Beeline after the game. Come on, man. I know that these guys, they, they want to play. We've had really good practices. I think the last month, even though we, we, haven't, we haven't had the wins that we'd like to have, we, we, we've been really playing hard. And we've been playing uh, more together and we're learning. And I think they've embraced that. So as a really happy, usually you go into a college locker room and everybody's jumping around, pro locker room, everybody's chilling, right? After a win, that, that locker room was hopping around right now. Everybody was really excited and they're excited. And if they're excited, then coaching staff is really excited. And that's because we want to have fun. And the way you have fun is you win. And we won tonight and uh, it was a whole lot of fun. Well, I just got some news for Coach Beeline. But actually, people are excited in locker rooms when they win in the NBA. It's just they haven't been doing it in there. Yeah. It, it, they do jump around and have fun. They don't jump around and yeah. spray I'm not water spraying water. Well, but, uh, cut it out. I, I, I just want to uh, – we, we, we got to address the Beeline. Yeah. Thing. Because, let, me, let me just – let me explain as before you do that just for the folks who might be wondering. Okay. So they have a film session and then – at the tail end of the film session, Beeline said the players were no longer playing like a, quote, like a bunch of thugs instead of slugs, which is what he meant to say. And then he's quoted as saying, I didn't realize that I had said the word thugs, but my staff told me later I did. And so uh, I must have said it. I meant to say slugs as in slow moving. We weren't playing hard before. And now we were playing harder. I meant it as a compliment. So he apologized to all the players on that team. Uh, for the misunderstanding. And well, uh, well, let me look, say this. Let me go first. Joe. Okay, sure. Because I know you're going to be long with it. If you have to be apologized to for your coach calling you thug, you ain't going to never win. You're soft. Okay? Period. First of all, one, they're not playing like thugs, so I believe him when he said you're playing like slugs. And third of all, stop being so sensitive. Would I grew you, up in the would 80s. Would you be offended here? I, listen, I grew up in the 80s. I got called worse than slug. Trust me. More than thug. Yes. More than, trust me. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, it don't, it, it don't. Well, it, 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 and Chuck, you can, you can bring it on home. But the context of what you're saying, obviously, makes, makes it. Uh, Man, uh, I, I, that's I, what the, I'm saying. The part of what people saying it's racial or not is, is the context of what he was using. And you, in the context of a basketball locker room, when you have Caspi and, and Kevin Love and you're calling guys thugs, you're not using it in a racial connotation. Well, they can that, play like thugs, too. But playing like thugs has, would actually be a compliment to a team who's not playing who's playing, you would look at it and say, they play soft that time. You ever heard they of the bad boys? Right, they, right. So you would actually, so we all know that he obviously didn't want to say that. They're so soft, but America. <sighs> apologetic. Sometimes you have to be real. Like, some people, sometimes you can keep it uh, right. Some keep it real, but sometimes you have to keep it right. And keeping it right is like, no, I'm not apologizing because I'm offended the way y'all playing. 
I'm offended watching. Like, we're offended as former players watching games sometimes when the Cavs play. We're offended watching certain other teams in the NBA the way they play. So, no, you don't have to apologize for the fact of the play, team is not playing well. Now, if you did, if someone took it in a, in a, in a, in a connotation of racial, they, it's, if you think about it, it it's almost impossible for that to be a kind of thing. But if they did, it's not wrong to apologize for so, somebody. Well, hold on, but he was emotional about it, making a but, statement. But, I would have said it to the okay in the locker room and called it a day. I'm yeah. not going to set this. Call it what it is, well, Chuck. Who's, just, who's the one who's selling? Chuck, call it what it is, Chuck. Uh, number one, I've I've never heard a bad word about Coach Beeline, ever. And you know, we one thing about basketball, we everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody in basketball. I've never heard a bad word about him. And what makes me mad about this whole conversation, he says in his apology, the coaches told me later that I said thugs instead of slugs. So clearly the players, because if, if, if they were offended at the moment, they would have said something, right? Said right Somebody's got to I would have stood up, up and yeah, down. Yeah, like, but they didn't do anything. Oh, but see, when they think about that, the players didn't say anything when it exactly happened. He had to come back later and say, I made a mistake. But none of the players said anything about it when it happened. So that tells me he just misspoke. But for the, the Cleveland Cavaliers players to be bitching about him practicing too long, his, uh, we're watching too much tape. and We don't the, like his college style. Yeah, and we don't, we're not working on fundamentals. This is a move to You guys have not, with, with the exception when LeBron James has been in Cleveland, in the last 10 years, you guys haven't won over 20 games. When LeBron James, I saw that stat. I can't for two. I was talking about it today. When LeBron James has not been in Cleveland in the last ten years, they've never won. I think the magic number was twenty-one. So to be complaining about a coach who's coming in trying to make y'all work on fundamentals when y'all stink, make y'all watch film, make y'all practice hard, this is starting this, to be a joke. This yeah. was a move to try to get him released. Period. Whatever happened to what 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 coaches say to us in the locker room stays in the locker room. How to get out? Who said something? And you're right. If you offend me in the locker room, coach, I gotta go back at you. Hey, hey, coach, don't, don't. Like, don't question. Right in the locker room, right, you gonna right, say right, right in the locker room. Right. It's done. I, every team yeah, I've ever done. been on but championship I, yeah. team, but they leave, they gonna, they we go would home. address that right there. Yeah, like, right Rudy, there. yo, whoa, 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 what'd you just call us? Yeah. Like, what'd you just yeah. say that? Oh, yeah. no, I meant, and he would have said it right yeah, there. Not right there. slugs. Oh, okay, I got you. But I'm just disappointed the Cavaliers players trying to get this man fired because they think they're working too hard and they stink. Plain and simple. Yeah, it, it's the, the reason I agree with Chuck, it's too much of a paper trail of other things. We're practicing too hard. Now, yeah, those things lead up to this. <laughs> We're watching now, too much. Now, if this, was, the number, if this yeah. was number one, Come on, then, man. Yeah, yeah, but, Come on, yeah, man. It's too much. We, hey, we, we know what you're trying to do to yeah. help. We can't yeah. fool. You can fool some of the people some now, of the time. And let me tell you something, Ernie. You fool what? Us. I'm tired of working on this show. We go too late. Oh, Let man. us off early. Oh, we <laughs> We've been in here all damn night. 11th win of the year. For Ooh, the 11. You should get coach of the year. <laughs> they win by three in Detroit. When we come back, the latest batch of All-Star returns from the fans. I don't believe we were just talking about it. I just J.A. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be deep. his name. Players of the <laughs> month. I'm name kid J.A. and stop. Players of the month. <laughs> it's yeah, some hard. It's, it's, yeah, it's got to be some more stuff going on. Freak. Yeah, it's got to be some more letters. You just can't stop at J.A. That's not true. Ja Rule. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was named after Ja Rule. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me want to go to the fire Festival. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. Give me the, oh. 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 Give me the update. Ernie. The update on the all-star balloting, uh, won't you please? In the uh, Western Conference, by the way, LeBron James has taken over the top spot overall, Ooh. going from third to first. Ooh, this uh, is this I'm not but, mad at this list. But here's the but here's the deal. That's that's in order of votes, but in the front court, it's LeBron Dallas. and Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard with Paul George fourth. Doncic and Harden are in the backcourt, one and two, with Lillard third. Oh, that's, Alex that, Caruso, that's, no, look no. at him. He's he's sixth among... Uh, Ernie, your son looks good the, out there. The back Listen, court. Th this is, this is set, set in stone right here, Ernie. Yeah, yeah I, I like this. So, that's and be, it should that's, be. And it should be, correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if you'll say the same thing about the East. Why not? Well, because let's look at it. Uh, Giannis, Embiid, and Siakam in the front court. Trey Young, Kyrie Irving would be the 
would be the uh, back court right now because Jimmy Butler is fourth in the front court. Oh, see, listen. To that. And we well, gotta change the rules. We gotta change the rules. Well, this is the fans who they want to see. Yeah, yeah no, not it's the second see, returns. It's not. Look it. at. Uh, see, we just can't be letting everybody vote. <laughs> well, there's going to be. It, it's, it's the fans. It's the fans. It's the players. It's the media. Last time. Listen. Last time we <laughs> let all these people have an opinion, we had a catastrophe on our hands. Oh, what are you trying to say? White House. <laughs> what are you trying? White to say? House. No. Can't let everybody vote. We can't let everybody have an opinion. Yeah. Hey, now, we're Trey. Is Trey Young an All Star? He's playing all-star like for sure. There's no doubt about it. He's playing all-star like. Well, well, ho, 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 if ho. he's not voted in as a starter, it, it, it's close. Should, should, like, according to Shaq's rules, he has he, to get in. No, because no, you no. say it's no, not no, about the team. It's, see, a, it's yeah, about the individual. They have, they have Shaq, the worst you record in the league. Stop, in, stop, Shaq. stop. And you just said it. he's playing all-star like. So you're correct. Okay, you're right. right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I, I would say... Y'all, the team have that. Only, nah, only, I ain't got only, nothing to do with that. Winning matters. No, That's winning matter. does matter. Winning does matter. Winning That's matters, matter. but I would say... I'm, I'm told. That he's ex yeah. his, it's extraordinary numbers that he's putting up. Mello, in 2015... Ten win, Ten win Knicks. and he and he was an all-star starter. So, Trey That's Young nuts. with the 8 and 30 all Hawks right singular. now. All-star singular. Don't forget it. Yeah, all I just star. say this. Uh, I'm not saying that Bob, his team is rebounds. Up, the Charisma. only reason he gets my consideration is the numbers are astronomical. Thank you. They're, 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 even though he's on the worst team in, in the NBA. I thought the Hawks would be better. I, 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 but John, the John Collins um, no, that, no, that, that hurt. That, that, that hurt. That, that, that's that not, hurt, though. But I they were actually playing decent. No. They were close because, to 500. Because, you know, DeAndre, five five. The, guy, the guy I thought was going to be in the conversation rookie of the year, DeAndre Hunter, has not did what I thought he was going to do. Cam Reddish has not did what he was supposed to do. Like, when you get two lottery picks, you should not have the worst record in the NBA. I, listen, you know I like John Collins. But when this season started, the Hawks had two of the top ten draft picks. I'm saying, man. Yeah, but just because you're a lottery pick don't mean you're going to come in the first year and Your do first work. year. Get yeah, but the, you should not yeah. have the worst record in the NBA. I, the, I, so the, fan, the fans have Trey Young and Kyrie Irving as the starting backcourt right now. Well, Kyrie Irving has played 11 games. It, well, Ky, listen, Kyrie can't make the All-Star team. Why? Because he hadn't played. He played 11 okay. games. I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no problems. He, want no <laughs> problem, <laughs> he hadn't played. Yeah, I, I, I think that Trey Young is kind of like when we were voting with, with um, Russell Westbrook with the MVP. It's like all right, the, you know, usually the top two or three got teams, guys were the top two or three teams, but the numbers that he's putting these triple doubles up Thank for you. the year, the whole year, well, it, even though they're the six, seven most seed. Viable player, but, but have most viable player. Well, let, let me say this. If the fans really were paying attention to the game, Jimmy Butler should be leading as the, from the I, would, I agree with that. From the guard position. Jimmy, the Miami Over Smith, Trey? Yes. Yes, over the Miami Heat. Yeah, Miami. Yes. But Jimmy Butler's a front court guy. Uh, thank you. Oh, he is? Yes. Yeah, see? So you got Giannis and Beaton Siakam. Siakam's been, Siakam's usual. been out for a while, Siakam, too. Siakam, did, well, well, let me just early, say this. He deserve it. Early. Other than Giannis. Trey deserves to be there. No, no. Uh, let me just say this. In the Eastern Conference, other than Giannis, Jimmy Butler should be an all-star. Uh, Jimmy Siakam, Butler. Siakam. No, no. It, it, this is just my Even opinion. with the amount of games. No, no. I'm Siakam. saying just in, in just my opinion, Giannis and Jimmy Butler been the two best players in the Eastern Conference. And I'm going to tell you something. Tell me something. If my boy Bam out of Bayern... Oh, Bam is going to make it. Okay, uh, thank you. Bam's, I said Bam... People are going to make the All-Star. Bam, 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 Bam is going to make the All-Star. Bam is an All-Star. He's not going to make it. No, Bam's going to make it. Bam. That, 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 that record in his... Yo, he's averaging a double-double 18 points. I understand point. that, but the people don't know who he is yet. Bam will make... No, the coaches. Well, this will be a way to let them know who he is. Bam, Bam... Y'all better start voting... Y'all better start voting for Bam out of Bayou. Yeah. <laughs> he is an all-star. Shaq and the Fool coming your way next here on Inside. Oh, got our picture on him here. Oh, whoa, these are kind of cool. Where are we? Oh, yeah, they do. Kenny, you're so, giving me your balls, too, because you don't play golf. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Thank you, Ken. And got That's uh, really cool. My favorite here, Chuck. 32 on there. Thank I'll you. Take, I'll take one Chuck. set. You can have the rest. Thank you. Chuck. I'm the only one play golf, me and you, Ernie. Charles. One thing, be gentle with my balls. <laughs> okay. This is makes up for my uh, play, hey, hey, for hey. my PlayStation. Hey, look, I, hey, I'm not grabbing his balls. You grab <laughs> go ahead, you just go ahead. They gonna stay right there. 
You can have them. <laughs> if you want them, you grab them yourself. <laughs> Ernie, hey, Chuck's like, hey. grabbing my balls. He's like, hey, give me my hey, balls. Hey, 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 Kenny and Shaq, <laughs> thanks for the balls. <laughs> Is this like 10th grade or am I shooting too high? Lower? Uh, hey, thanks, eight. Ken. Seventh? Uh, sixth grade. Okay. Fifth grade. Hey, I'm listen. Shaq and a fool. Hey, they, they love, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Got a lot of balls to talk. Look at this. All right. Ernie's face right there. <laughs> uh, that's the young one. That was pretty <laughs> close right there, as a matter of fact. Uh, 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 wrapping things up on inside. That's going right viral, kid. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Balling up at night. You're watching Inside the NBA, brought to you by the Telluride from Kia, official automotive partner of the NBA. Visit Kia.com to learn more. That is the catchiest theme music yeah, around. I like that. I really do. Welcome to the Steam Room, everybody. We've incorporated live guests. Chris Fowler of Big ESPN. Name. Jake Tapper of CNN. Yes. Playing with Tiger in his heyday was incredible. For you, but not for him. You were the very first guest picker. You know that, right? I did not know that. You were the first guest picker. Chris Fowler is the first guest on the Steam Room. Wow. And I can't brag about our show because that just make you an And Ernie, you may or may not know this, but I first met Charles in a Wendy's. There's a pretty good chance song. of that. <laughs> the, the anchor laugh? Yeah. <laughs> Monica? This dude ain't getting in my neighborhood. <laughs> Big picture, you got two 14 or no teams. So whatever happens, you're going to see a piece of football history. You know, I'm an SEC guy, so go LSU Tigers, go LSU Tigers, go LSU Tigers. <laughs> Be the next to download the Steam Room, wherever that, you download getting your podcast. Chris, Chris Fowler and Jake Tapper today, that was the highlight of our three-episode podcast so far. Very fun thanks, talking to those guys. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Chris Fowler. Good luck Monday night. And, and, and Jake Shaq Tapper. and I are starting our own podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It's what, what, what's we'll going to be, dumb, dumb and Dumber? No, no, we, you already took that no, one. No, it's going to be called Rings. Oh, so you know and we only about. gonna interview people who yes. champ. Yes, it's right. yeah. that time. Oh. It's time for EJ's Mino Sound of the Night. Presented by no one. Come on, Ernie. Unsullied by sponsorship since 1989. Thank you very it's much. It's a new year, Jack. though, Ernie. Huh? New decade. It's a new decade. That's come out in style. Unsullied by sponsorship in this decade. That's it's that's really that's good. A shame. Um. You got a big game coming up there Monday, champ. We sure do. Yep. Well, how can you sure call him do. champ? They ain't played the game yet. No, he's a champ. Oh. Oh, oh I'm oh, right right going at you now. No, he is. He's, he's a Just champ. Not, four times. Four times. Okay. We going uh, at you. So hey, I'm going at you. LSU and Clemson. LSU and Clemson, Monday night. Right, it's um, it's going to be a great game, great atmosphere. We're, we're at the crib. New Orleans is part of the crib. Yeah. Uh, 24 to 3. Oh, my God. Y'all gonna score more than 24, and they definitely gonna get more than three. Okay, 48 to six. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, let's test your knowledge. Hold on, let me make sure I got my <laughs> stuff. Let's test your knowledge of Clemson and LSU. Well, he probably shouldn't. He should not know. Well, yeah, well, yeah. No, I, but I, I don't know. No, but here's oh, the deal. Oh, let's do it. I'm just gonna you show you. Know LSU. I'm gonna show you guys side by side. Okay, you tell got me it. Which Team they play for. Oh, oh, that's, you that's, that's, hold on. <laughs> this, is, this isn't a fair game because. Uh, Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Which one plays for LSU? Okay, Trevor Lawrence is touchdown Jesus. I know who that is. He plays for Clemson. Joe Burrow is my guy. I just saw him at LSU when I was down there last week. Correct. Very good. Oh, that was pretty good. All right, now. That was too easy. Justin Jefferson and T. Higgins. I'm going to go with Justin Jefferson, who you guys on the purple sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> And the other guy, yeah. That is pretty obvious. Way to go. He's a cop, y'all. He's a cop. He, he's very observant. How about this one? Travis, oh, he got another purple Travis shirt. Travis ATN and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Oh, purple Harris shirt. Sounds Louisiana, but I'm going to go with Travis for LSU and Clyde for He's got another purple oh, you shirt. Did, that just means you're wrong. But no, I said, no, I said Travis for Clemson. No, no you yeah, said Clyde. Travis for LSU. No, he said Travis for Clemson. Okay, so yeah, he was right. He he three. No, he said Travis for Clemson. Thank you. Did yeah. I say Kenny? Yeah, he did. Yes. Next. Grant Delpit and Andrew. He's putting, they're putting purple shirts on everywhere. That's funny. 
I see a thing on his collar. It looks like it says LSU. He looks like a... Um, I'm going to go with Grant Del Pilla, LSU, and Andrew Bart at our Clemson. Yes, correct. And finally, you're doing very well, big fella. Jerome, oh, you know who this is. Jerron Blossom game and Tremont Water. You got to know this. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you, the, here's, a, here's a hint. It's not football. Kenny, oh, why would you why would football. you blow the, the, the what? deal? But he wouldn't have made us. He played, Clemson. He played for Clemson. <laughs> yeah, that's a Clemson. <laughs> Clemson. He played yeah, that's for Clemson. Fremont Waters had a great. Yeah, uh, he played for LSU? Yeah. I never knew that. Oh, very good. Thank you. Basketball. Uh, but he, see, he still didn't know. Good luck, big.